As promised, a quick video on graphing sine and cosine functions. Please keep in mind that your professor is going to expect you to know that that sine comes in this standard form, a sine of the quantity bx plus c, and cosine comes in a very similar form. So something to know. Um, this video, I'm not in, my intention is not to teach you about phase shift or, uh, or amplitude or period or how to find an interval that contains exactly one cycle of this curve. It's only to teach you how to graph this in a couple different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, what you would do is you go to menu, but I'm going to go to here and I'm just going to hit, I'm going to go to graphs. So you have that same function. I'm going to, and I'm going to put in my graph if you don't mind. Right, the one thing I am going to do here is this that I, I want to show you is that if you go back to menu, you can set up your window. And when you set up your window, look, you can do your window settings. So let's say you wanted to see this thing. I know this is in terms of radians, but it's not set up in radians here. So what I think I want to do is this. I want to do this like uh, zero. Let's have my minimum value zero here. So zero. And then down here, I'm going to make this 2. There's lots of ways it is, but the way I'm going to do it is just type in the word pi, 2 pi. And if you check this out, it's 0 to 2 pi. It's really important. Now, it does say 6.28, which is not an exact answer, but something to think about here. Now, if I put this curve in, sine of x, there's the curve, right? The other thing I guess I could do is this. This is not a very accurate picture, so I could go back to, let me go back to zoom here and window settings. And look, because my Y minimum is really small. If I made it like negative two to two, because we know that the range of cosine and sine, unless it's been altered by amplitude, is negative one to one. So just to give this a better look, and right? Doesn't that look more like what you were expecting? So there's that going to go back to here and here's your screen face if you hit the tab button right it'll take you here and then I'm going to put in cosine so I'm going to put in cos whoops hello cosine x and hit enter and there's that curve now what can you do man you can do so much cool stuff from here uh, your, pro your professor may ask you where they intersect so you can go to menu which for me is up here, but you can go to menu here and you'll get this screen and you can analyze this graph. And what you can do is analyze it, the intersection. So what it's asking you now is the lower bound. So when it asks for the lower bound down here at the bottom left, what it's saying is some point to the left of, not up or down, but to the left of your intersection point. So here's to the left, isn't it? And over here is right anywhere. It could be over here. You don't want to pass the second intersection, but anywhere in here, right? So hit enter and it gives you this point of intersection. And you can check the other one too. Now the bad thing is it does not give it to you in radians, right? <clears throat> so that's a little bit of a difficulty. You can also analyze the graph here and you can do inflection points, you can find derivatives, and you can find the integral. That is to say, you can find out what's the area locked inside of here. This is really, really cool functionality stuff. So. I hope this is helpful as a quick video to you. Um, give me some comments and some feedback, and, and I'll make it do what you want it to do. Okay? Thanks for watching, and if uh, your comments are always welcome, and I hope you're already subscribed. Now I'm going out of town. Ciao.